So today we're uh, heading out from Boise to Cheyenne with my dad and we're going to talk a little bit about uh, his background with Aerostar and the fact that he was the number three hire and did a lot of the design work on the Aerostar. So it'll be a fun trip with an interview while we're in flight. So enjoy it. Terminal arrival departure information Foxtrot 14530. Wind 090 zero, zero, at 8. Visibility 10. Sky clear below at 2000. Temperature 17. 2.0. Altimeter 2995. Visual approach is the same as it was yesterday. Landing and departing runway 10 right. I'm Eric Reese. I sell real estate for a living, but I fly and instruct in the Aerostar for fun. Join us on our travel and training adventures in the world's fastest light piston twin. Boise Clarence, Aerostar 11111 with uh, Foxtrot IFR to Cheyenne. Aerostar 11111, clear to Cheyenne, airport via fly runway heading, radar vectors feather as filed, climb maintain 16000, expect flight level 21010 zero, zero minutes after departure, departure frequency 119.6, squawk 6065. Okay, one 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 one. It's clear to the Cheyenne Airport via runway headings, radar vector to feather. Then it's filed. Uh, climb maintain one six zero. Expect um, uh, two one zero ten minutes after departure. And one nineteen point six and squawk six zero six five. Aero star November five one three back correct. Boise Ground, Aerostar 11111 is at uh, Western Aviation with Foxtrot Taxi IFR. Aerostar 11111, Roger. All right, one zero right, taxi via Foxtrot Juliet. Hold short of Juliet. You should see a Cherokee out there as well. Okay, Foxtrot Juliet. Hold short of uh, uh, Foxtrot for triple one. Aerostar 11111, runway one zero right, group signal. Okay, one zero right, cleared for takeoff, triple one. All right, so now the uh, pitot heat comes on, strobes come on, pulse lights come on, boost pumps on. That completes that checklist, and one more check to make sure that the ox hydraulic is armed, and we are cleared for takeoff. So, takeoff briefing is, if we have a problem when we're on the ground, of course, we're gonna shut down and stop. If we're off the ground because we got 10,000 feet, I should be able to get down, back down with zero wind and land, but if the gear's up, we're going, and this airplane will climb without a problem. And, you know, I can use the hydraulic steering, and, you know, if we've got enough speed, I can use a little differential braking, obviously, that helps. All right, we'll just go ahead and run it on up nice and easy on a rolling start. Yokes back a little bit on the center line. Okay, there's 30 inches of manifold pressure. Turbos have kicked in. Temperatures and pressures are good over there, all the way up to 42 inches of manifold pressure. Okay, power's good and set. 70 knots. 80 knots, lighten the nose a little bit. 90, 95, nice little bit of back pressure. Relax as it comes up. Gears coming up. Flaps up. Just letting the airplane accelerate. Going to departure, triple one. Thousand for five thousand. 
Star one 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 one, so with you out of four thousand for one six thousand runway heading. Aerostar one 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 one, big fan road trader contact. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what this trip is all about. Oh, and we're going to the fiftieth uh, anniversary of the Aerostar Owners Association convention, which is in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma this year. Should have a pretty good crowd, and. Uh, you guys haven't figured out who I'm sitting next to. It's my dad. That's Dick Reese. And he was uh, third hire at Aerostar. Is that right? Okay, 1984, flying level 380. And he's 1984, flying center, Roger. Responsible for a good portion of the design of the airplane, especially the aesthetics. And there's a story behind that that I want you to tell me. Uh, and I think, so you were hired in, it actually you got the job at what, December 64, and then went to work in January? Oh, but your official hire date was like February something? I forgot. One, two, one, one, five. Oh, I came on board February 2nd or something like that. Okay. 65, because I was finishing up a project at Space General. Okay. When I was hired, uh, mid December of 65, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, 64, so, but there was a story told me about TR, Ted R. Smith, I think the R is Roosevelt, is it his middle name? No, I don't know, I think, I think it's Theodore Roosevelt Smith. So, he and his wife, Renita, took off and went on vacation to Hawaii about two weeks after you started. About yeah, yeah, okay. Or, so or what? Or before? Before. So, tell me the story about you looking at the original drawings and what you thought, and then what you ended up doing, and uh, what you thought might happen. Go to ten thousand. Stretch to maintain one two thousand. One two thousand. I don't. Looking back, I don't know where I had the nerve to do what I did. <laughs> but anyway, but you were what? Thirty-five years old. Uh, just, just, uh, uh, let's see, that was 64, yeah, yeah, 35. Yep. Uh, and I'd had enough experience in engineering this kind of thing to where I was confident in myself, but, but I just didn't like the looks of the airplane, the nose in particular. It, it, if you, if you've ever seen the original Air Commander that TR did coming out of, uh, When he was working for, um, I was just drawing a blank. Douglas? Yeah, Douglas. Uh, very round nose, very stubby looking airplane. It was not a very attractive looking airplane. <coughs> and the, uh, the uh, Aerostar, the original drawings were similar. It was not a good looking airplane. So I just took it upon myself to change the shape of the nose in particular to make it a better looking airplane. I'd be knowing that Theodore that I'd done this. And when he came back from Hawaii, he looked at the drawing and different from what uh, Dave has in his book. Uh, TR didn't just walk away and say nothing. TR said, you know, that looks good. Let's build a mock-up and go from there. So TR was a very, uh, he was, I, I would classify him as brilliant, but he, he, uh, he did all of his own marketing, he did all of his own writing of the, the uh, articles in all the magazines, or not the articles, but the, all the PR work. 
with Bill Kalpas, they raised the money. Uh, he, he initially got all the tools, bought the tools to make the airplane. So he really was an all-around person. He, uh, he, he knew a lot about every phase of the airplane, of the building airplane. But to me, one of his shortcomings was that he was, he was too optimistic, overly optimistic. So he was always saying we would accomplish this or that much sooner than it was possible. And I think part of that was to push all of us to start as quick as possible. What has frustrated his investors uh, uh, because he was getting airplanes produced as quickly as he said they would. But anyway, that's, but he was a, uh, he, he believed in trying to find young people that, that hadn't been swayed by the bigger aircraft companies in their thinking. And he tried to find young people, I think, that were, that were self-starters, uh, or aggressive of what they were doing, uh, or that were smart and, and were, and, and, uh, Number six, six, one, two, three, heading. So by putting those people together, he, he formed the team. There's no question that Aerostar was not built by, by, uh, by committee, because that was not working. So it was just, uh, we started out with just uh, four or five guys, and within six months, I think we built maybe 10 guys or something like that. We, we basically had the airplane design. So it, uh, and then we started making parts after six months. So it was a hand. We, we, each of us would go out of the, the shop. And, and it was a very, very interesting. Uh, opportunity that we had. Uh, was going to be unbelievable. Six, 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 Number six, thank you, welcome to Fire Vigil for the Strix Airport. Report to cancellation by far this frequency. If unable to flight service, change your budget for your keep proof. Good job, clear for this one. Okay. So, were the tail sections um, similar to what it is now? So that the no. sweep, so that was all that was all done. No, because his it. idea was to have everything interchangeable, so yeah. the vertical the vertical and horizontal stabilizers were all interchangeable. Uh, and so anyway, so it uh, so that that's that was pretty well fixed. It's the nose that So Looking at this, and you've flown with me before, actually you were at the 2017 convention with us when we went back to uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Um, and you think of, I mean, this, the basic airplane, the airframe from the original 600, actually the original, I mean, really go back to the original, you had a, that's, that's in the type certificate, is the Aerostar 360, the Aerostar 400, the like Aerostar 642. So, but from that original airplane, is there really anything different other than the pressurization of the turbocharger? Well, the pan, uh, the, uh, this airplane, the panel is is a little different. There's some, there's more stuff here, because when when we first came, well, let's see, I guess I'm starting to say, when I first started flying in the military, Omni was just coming in. ILS was just coming in. It yep. was still low frequency range. Uh, John, your 70 zero, Charlie Alpha, back with you, 300. 70 zero, Charlie Alpha, Vice to Roger. And for those people that don't know what Omni is, <laughs> that's the O in VOR, or VHF yeah. Omni right. range. So, Dad was born on October 20. 5th, 1929, we won't go into the fact that that was Black Friday and that has nothing to do with Thanksgiving. But uh, anyway, so he, when you go back to when he was flying the T-33s in the early 50s, they, VORs were just coming into play. And you, you were flying with something called Orignal, so you were listening 
and uh, and I don't even know what that is. I have some. Well, no, no. First, we, we were flying. It was still low, for, low frequency range. Okay. You're listening to the A and N St. Louis State on course. I still, the GCA had been around for a long time, and the GCAs were very good. But the ideal thing then was if the field got the new ILS, it still had the GCAs. The ideal thing was to fly the ILS with the GCA telling you, you know, giving you directions. So you had the ILS as a backup the GCA, but the GCA operators were, in those days, really, really good. In fact, I had uh, experience, uh, the flying I did, it was a kind of a special flying, but we, we had, we, we could write our own clearance IFR. Uh, where a field was closed, we could, we, could, we could open the field ourselves and land anyway, even though it was a power airport. But anyway, I, I got involved, uh, I, my sister was in the hospital at UCLA with cancer, and I had flown out, and I planned to land to LA International in the T-33 again. The weather was completely socked in. It was IFR all the way, and we, we had a lot of IFR experience. I was flying IFR four hours a day, five days a week for three solid years, so <clears throat> and on one, one given day, I would shoot uh, a four-hour period, I would shoot probably four ILSs, four GCAs, four jet penetrations, maybe a couple of ADF approaches. So we build them a lot of time, uh, very quickly, flying solid estimates the whole time. But anyway, uh, so some guy in a T-33 had landed, tried to land at L International, and because the weather was so bad, he landed on the taxiway that stopped at Sepulveda Boulevard and went over and landed on top of cars, killed him, people in the car and everything else. Of course, I knew this was going on, so I diverted to Oxnard Air Force Base and landed there again. It was, the field was closed. Yeah, is that Point Magoo now? The Oxnard well, Air or is it? Well, I'm quite honest, I forgot it was Oxnard or Point Magoo. I mean, the point, because I see, as I remember, it was the Navy. That's Point, yeah, Point Magoo. So it was Point Magoo on okay. land. And uh, I've been at GCA into Point Magoo, uh, and I, I did not see the runway until my wheels touched. Those guys were that good. It was unbelievable. It was raining so hard, both static ports plugged, so I lost all vertical speed, airspeed, everything, all this watch off, right, probably, probably 500 feet off of, off of touching down. <laughs> so why did they just hang on and, and listen to GCA? They were really, really good. So GCA, for those who don't know, stands for Ground Controlled Approach. Right. And uh, but you still have that, right? Yeah, they still have it, but, you know, I don't think they're doing much with it anymore. Um, you know, from a training standpoint, I remember... <coughs> Uh, when I was doing my instrument work going down to uh, Fort Lewis in Washington and flying the uh, uh, GCAs, and they were a lot of fun. Those guys were really good. Uh, but, boy, with everything, why why was your static and pitot system plugged up? Because the rain. Rain is hard. They right. plugged up both of them. Well, they had one static system on both sides of the nose of the airplane. It was raining so hard, it filled over the water, and it just... They, they could, the drain system couldn't handle it. Wow, I've never, I've rained, flown well, it was extremely hard rain, but it's, uh, I think they probably changed the divi design yeah, of the yeah, system. After all, this is, this is 1954, I think this happened. So, you know, lots of change since then. Yeah, look at my gray hair. Yeah, Denver Center Air Star uh, one one triple one is looking for lower when we get it. November uh, one one one, sure. Uh, Descent eighteen one three thousand. The Cheyenne Off Center, just more than all the three zero one one. Okay, three zero one one and uh, one three thousand triple one. <laughs> okay, pressure's armed. I nice say everyone take a micro view of the field. It's fine. Our on field is on pressurization. Everyone take a micro view. Roger, traffic calling twelve o'clock and six miles. Aero Star descending at one zero. 
Shiner SR-111, Shiner report 12 o'clock, 12 miles. Triple One has your report site. Triple One, clear visual approach, runway 31. Okay, visual approach 31, Triple One. Number 111, radar service terminated, leaving 7000. You can contact tower now, 118.7, have a good day. Okay, radar service terminated, and we'll contact tower, uh, Triple One. Cheyenne Tower, Air Star 11111 is with the inbound. Uh, looks like we're kind of on a 45 for runway 31 on the visual, um, out of 9000. Cheyenne Tower, runway 31, wind 310 at 1320, clear to land. Triple one, clear to land, 31. 500. 400. 300. Cheyenne Tower, can you hear 831, take a mic, visual uh, 31. Can you hear one take a mic, Cheyenne Tower, runway 31, wind 330, zero, 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 good land. We're to land. Hey, you're going to check last one, time. Boy, it's gusty. 100. 50. 100. 200. 100. It's blowing. <laughs> Turn left at Bravo 1, contact ground point 9 off. Okay, we can turn left here at Bravo 1, we'll contact ground point 9.